What up? Insane Clemens Posse, Great American Clout Chaser, and Real Life Time Variant Mark Twain here. Y'all have been chattering about the Walt Disney Company's Marvel Comics Studio Company's Loki show on the social medias, so I thought, what better use of our collective time than for me to Twain explain to you the same piece of pop entertainment we both just consumed while the world around us literally burns. Besides, I kind of used my roommate Diane's credit card to sign up for a free week at Disney Plus. Can't figure out how to shut it off. So, might as well binge the four to some hours of Marvel content necessary to partially understand what the hell anybody talking about on this show. Loki is the story of a narcissistic fascist in a ridiculous wig who manages to elude criminal prosecution for his many crimes against humanity because the so-called Avengers weren't very good at their jobs. But before this highly shippable Scandi god with a British accent can get up to his old tricks again, he's abruptly arrested by some kind of time cops who very quickly offer him a cooperation agreement so this overprivileged son of a dictator can once again avoid accountability for his actions. Hashtag all time cops are bad. Forced to reevaluate his life choices after Owen Wilson shows him a supercut of all his scenes in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, currently streaming on Disney Plus, Loki agrees to quantum leap around in time with Wilson, setting right what once went wrong, 80s buddy cop style, whilst they hunt up the most dangerous time criminal of all, Loki himself. This intriguing premise for a serialized television procedural is promptly abandoned and replaced with a new one. Will Loki f*** himself? Which, okay. But instead of giving us the Tom Hiddleston being horny for another Tom Hiddleston show that we all deserve, we get a very gender normative romance between the newly canonically queer Loki and a female version of himself. Anyways, it all comes together, or don't, depending on how rigorous you like your story logic, in a delightful 40-minute exposition dump from the Kang Who Remains, who offers our Lokis a choice, twixt replacing him as some kind of overworked time despot, or an all-out, ill-defined multiversal war. Which seems like there might be some kind of less dystopian middle ground to explore, but... I guess Doctor Strange and the multiverse of representative democracy ain't got the same rang to it. In the end, Lady Loki deposes the despot, which for some reason is the wrong choice. Emo Loki gets his heart broke, cause he never got to f himself. And we get a Planet of the Apes style cliffhanger to reassure our franchise addled brains lest we had any doubt that the MCU, not unlike Celine Dion's heart, We'll go on. Mark Twain. You didn't sign me up for Disney Plus, did you? No. Really? Because there's a bunch of charges on my credit card. Really? That's so peculiar. Big tech, right? You lost your TV privileges. What?